In this video, we'll be looking at the example for the compression member on how we can find the capacity of the compression member. Now, in this problem, we can see that um, we have to design axial load carrying capacity. We have to find um, design axial load carrying capacity, that is N star, for a column made of um, grade 300 plus steel. And we have 100 UC 14.8 section uh, with the concentric con uh, with the concentric connection, uh, and the total length of the column is five meter. So we can see that the total length is five meter, and the column is fixed at both the ends, as shown in the figure. So we need to find the compression capacity of this member, and also we are asked to find out the design axial load capacity using the design capacity charts that are provided. So we'll go. To to this one a bit later. Let's first find out um, the compression capacity of this steel section uh, through the detailed process. Now first we have to write down what are the properties of this 100 UC 14.8 section that are relevant to us. So the section properties Uh, 14.8 sections that we are interested in the air, gross area of the steel or the net area is the same again there are no holes in there no mention of the holes so they are the same so we need that property and we also need um, the radius of gyrosin about x axis radius of gyrosin about the y axis buckling and the yield strength of the section form factor KF uh, they are all we can obtain from the one steel table uh, we, we need to find out so again for X and Y axis so about X axis the uh, we will be looking at the um, moment of inertia about X axis moment of inertia about the Y axis and find out the radius of gyrus in X and Y axis which are all listed in one steel table so let's have a look at the one steel table for 100 UC 14.8 first so here I have the table from one steel table and we have the properties already given here. Uh, so let's mark it here. So you see that in this table 100 UC 14.8 that is the section that we have here. And the, the properties that we need from there is the area of steel section that is gross area is 18 90 millimeters square. And of course we have the moment of inertia for about X and Y axis. Um, but the properties that we'll be using is the radius of gyrosin about x-axis rx and radius of gyrosin about y-axis ry is 24.5 millimeters. So these are the things that we need. Um, and uh, if we look into the next table, table number 16, now again we look at 100 UC 14.8. Uh, we need to find Fy uh, yield stress uh, of the member. So you can see that. Uh, for flames and wave, it is 320 megapascals. We have to take it as 320 megapascal. Uh, if it is different, we have to take the smaller one on that. And the KF factor is 1. That means um, there is no consideration for local buckling for this section. They are relatively thick members, so we don't have to consider the local buckling as KF factor is 1. Um, so we have to write down these properties, and then we can uh, start to find uh, analyze the section so let's write down this property so the gross area as we can uh, we got it from one steel table is 1890 millimeter square and rx if you remember is 14.1 millimeter and ry radius of gyrus in about y axis 24.5 millimeter they're all coming from one steel table and yield stress is 320 megapascal and the form factor again is 1.0 that means there is no local buckling happening there and these are all from now another properties given uh, geometric properties given for the column is total length
So the total length of the column is 5 meter and that's also known. Now we need to find the effective length factor uh, to find the effective length of the column and it depends on the, um, the end conditions of the column. So the effective length factor that is Ke for both and fixed column And now this can be obtained from AS 4100 um, code. Let's have a look at it. Now that would be in table. Yep, yeah, here it is. Uh, now uh, from uh, clause 4.6.3.2, we can see that uh, the column that we have is both in fixed. That is um, this one and the buckling will be like this one. So the effective length factor Ke is, is 0.7. So from there, we can see that um, the Ke factor is 0 0.70. That's coming from clause 4.6.3.2 in AS4100. Now, therefore, the effective length of our section is the effective length factor Ke multiplied by the total length of the member. So we have 0 0.7 multiplied by the total length of the member is 0 0.5 meter. Um, so we have effective length as 3.5 meter. Now, once we know the effective length, and radius of gyration we already know, so we can find out the slenderness ratio about x and y axis. So, so we have lambda ex is um, the effective length about x axis divided by rx. So the effective length in both x and y direction in this example are same. There are no bracing in both the uh, about both axes, so it is same. So lea lex is Again, um, 3.5, that is 3,500 centimeter, divided by Rx we have is 41.1. Now that would come uh, 85.15, um, 15 lambda, there is no unit for slenderness ratio. A lambda EY is again LEY by RY and LEY is again 3500 in X, X axis as well and RY is um, 24.5. So that gives us um, the slenderness ratio of 442.8. Right, so that's the slenderness ratio about x and y axis. And as we can see here already, uh, the critical one is the um, the one that has the bigger slenderness ratio. So this is the critical one. That is, it is more slender about y axis, and that's where the buckling will happen. So the critical slenderness ratio is 142.85. So let's write it down here. So. that is lambda e equals to 142.8, the bigger one of the two. So it will be uh, buckling about the y-axis. Now, as AS4100 gives, uh, we can find out the modified slenderness ratio, lambda n, or the modified Now that's coming from, yep, yeah, so uh, the modified slenderness ratio is coming from here. As you can see, lambda n is, uh, this is nothing but lambda e, square root of kf and square root of fi over 250. So it's coming from uh, class number 6.3.3.
So plugging in the values, 1.0, FY is 320. So that will give us 161.55 uh, slenderness ratio. Now this is the slenderness ratio we'll use to find the alpha C factor. Now, uh, for the UC section or the uh, hot roll universal column section, member section constant or alpha B, that is alpha B is obtained from table uh, 6.3.31 so let's have a look at the table uh, if you look into AS30 uh, AS 4100 you can see here 6.3.3a uh, um, now we have hot roll universal beam and universal uh, C, UC section for flame thickness up to 40 millimeters so our one falls under this so our flame thickness is less than 40 millimeters so alpha b uh, or the compression member section constant alpha b is zero so we'll be taking that one from there 6.3.3 a so alpha b is zero and that is coming from table 6.3.3 a from as 4100 and now that's for uh, UC section, hot roll UC section for flange thickness less than 40 millimeter. Now once we have alpha, uh, lambda n, slenderness ratio, and alpha b, that is um, the member section constant, we can find alpha c, that is the member slenderness ratio. Now uh, the member slenderness ratio that is alpha c can be obtained now using these two parameters. So uh, we have lambda n is 161.55, alpha b is zero. So look at uh, AS 4100 again, and we can see the 6.3.3 c. And this is where we find the alpha c factor. And our lambda n here and alpha b here, we know alpha b is zero, and we have to find the corresponding lambda n that is 161.55. So let's go down. So it is between these two, 160 here, lambda n, 165 here. We have to interpolate between these two values for 0.2, so it should be between 0.277 and 0.263. Um, now if we, no, sorry, it will be between uh, 0.263 and 0.249. So if we interpolate between these two values for 161.55, so we'll get alpha C as 0.258. Now that's interpolating the value from table 6.3.3b for lambda n equals to 161.55 and alpha b equals to 0. So for these two parameters, lambda alpha c is 0 0.258. Now once we know this alpha c factor, we can easily find uh, the section capacity and the member capacity of the column. So therefore, the member cap uh, section capacity, let's first find. We can find NS equals to KF considers the, um, the local buckling net area multiplied by Fy. So we need to consider only when it's the it's not fill hole. So Kf is 1.0. The section is thick enough, so there is no local buckling happening. The gross area that we have is 1890 from one steel table properties, and Fy is 320 megapascal. So with that, we get um, section capacity as 604.8 eight kilonewton here and the member capacity now where we consider the um, the member buckling into account so we consider the member buckling using the alpha c factor and that's multiplied into the section capacity that we just computed and alpha c we already have found out as 0 0.258 
and this multiplied with ns that is 604.8 kilonewton uh, gives us nc as 156.04 kilonewton and now of course that is the critical one and this is your capacity therefore um, the design capacity or the maximum load it can take is phi nc is 0 0.9 multiplied by 156.04 kilonewton and that comes out to be 140.43 kilonewton so the design compression capacity of the member is 140 140.43 kilonewton The second part of the question asks us to find the capacity of the 100 UC 14.8 section using the design charts. So we can use the design charts to find out the capacity, same as what we did uh, through the, uh, uh, the code as well. So the design charts look like this one. So we have um, different compression capacity about x-axis in this chart for different sections and these are the curves for each section given to us so once we know the effective length we can easily find out what is the capacity about x-axis there is a similar chart for y-axis so we, we can find out the capacity for y-axis as well and whichever is smaller and that's where the buckling will occur and that is our critical capacity now we know that uh, the effective length for our case is 3.5 meter uh, we multiply the total length 5 with the, um, the effective length uh, constant Ke, so that gives us 3.5 meter. And our section is 100 UC 14.8, which is this one. So this is the curve that, are really, that is relevant to us. So let's first find out what is the capacity of this column about x-axis buckling. So uh, our effective length is 3.5 meter in both x and y directions. So going with that, um, so our, ours is 1, 2, 3. 3.5 so it is somewhere here and um, so this is giving our capacity about x-axis and you can see that the capacity phi nc about x-axis that is phi nc is the y-axis which gives us it is 300 kilonewton so the capacity of the column for buckling about x-axis is 300 kilonewton, right? It can straight, uh, we can find it straight away from the uh, design charts. Now this is about the x-axis. We have to do the same thing for the y-axis chart as well. So let's look at the y-axis chart here. So this is the y-axis um, chart um, capacity about the y-axis. And again, effective length, we know that is 3.5 meter and our section is 100 UC 14.8. So let's go 3.5 meter here. So it is 1, 2, 3.5. It is somewhere here. And our capacity is um, 300. If you look into the curve here, uh, our capacity is around 140 kilonewton for for this so phi nc for about the y-axis buckling is 140 kilonewton which we obtain from the detail analysis as well so using the design charts also we can easily find out what is your capacity for the column as well right so it is x-axis and y-axis chart and there are corresponding tables as well as you can see here and uh, for 100 UC 14.8 and your effective length is between 3 to 4 so it is between 3 uh, 3.5 so if you interpolate between these two values you will get around 140 capacity as well so you can find the uh, the capacity of the columns in many different ways one we can do it in a detailed analysis like we did before or you can do it from the table or you can do it from the chart as well